Meanwhile, Israel is now facing international condemnation after its parliament voted to ban the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestinian refugees. And the Biden administration says it's deeply troubled by Israel's ban on UNRWA and there could be consequences under U.S. law if implemented. This comes as the World Food Program warns 90 percent of Gazans face severe food insecurity. Senior Vice President for Crisis, Response, Recovery and Development at the International Rescue Committee, Sirian Donnelly, joins me now for more on this. Sirian, thank you for coming on. Uh, UNRWA plays a critical role in serving people in desperate need in Gaza. So how significant is this ban from Israel? This ban is going to have devastating consequences on the situation in Gaza and the people in Gaza if it's implemented. Um, as you know, after the events of the last 12 months, conflict of the last 12 months, most of the population is displaced, most of them living in absolutely horrific conditions with insufficient shelter, water, sanitation, food. Hundreds of thousands of people are at risk of famine. Now, UNRWA is um, the biggest player in the humanitarian landscape in Gaza. It operates um, hundreds of medical facilities, provides 15,000 medical consultations a day across the work that it does. It provides psychosocial support for children. For organizations like ours, the International Rescue Committee, we depend on them uh, for fuel to run our vehicles and operations. We depend on them for coordination to be able to access Gaza. Simply put, the humanitarian response writ large has been built around UNRWA's facilities. They're a core and their services. They're a core part of the response. There's, there's no way to replace that in short order by any other agency, even if that were an appropriate thing to do, given their mandate from the General Assembly. So there's going to be a, a, an absolutely devastating uh, impact on an already horrific situation. And Kieran, UNRWA's chief spokesperson tells ABC News the agency's, quote, impossible to replace, especially in a place like Gaza, and warns the move could severely curtail UNRWA's ability to get desperately needed aid into Gaza. So what kind of impact could this have on the IRC and other NGOs that serve not only Gaza, but the West Bank and East Jerusalem? Our services in Gaza and the West Bank are massively oversubscribed already, and that's true of, of all of our humanitarian partners. Um, the humanitarian response um, collectively has not been able to reach the level of scale that's needed to alleviate suffering inside Gaza. And that's in large part due to the restrictions on access and the restrictions on movement, the insecurity within Gaza um, that we all face. It's incredibly difficult to get staff and supplies across the border. It's incredibly difficult to move around effectively and safely. If UNRWA goes away, it's not possible for organizations like ours or the humanitarian community as a whole to simply scale up and replace it. So you will see an enormous gap created in an already insufficient response um, as winter looms and as thousands and thousands of Palestinians living in Gaza depend on UNRWA for basic uh, services and basic facilities and as organizations like ours depend on them for logistical support. And Kieran, the UN Secretary General says Israel's ban on UNRWA, if implemented, would violate international law. The IRC describes the situation in northern Gaza as dire. So can anything be done to stop this ban? Um, you know, we're an operational humanitarian organization. I think that question goes to political leaders who have influence within Israel and influence over Israel. Um, and I think it really is a question for those who want to bring about um, a sustainable solution to the situation in Gaza. Uh, for us, that means having a ceasefire, having an agreement that uh, results in the return of hostages safely and ultimately results in a cessation of hostilities and, uh, and the ability to scale up uh, the humanitarian response. While things like the threatened uh, dismantling of UNRWA are on the table, um, it's very hard to see how we get to any of that. So I think it goes back to Israel's and Israel's international partners and whether they're willing to take steps to move towards a satisfactory resolution in Gaza. Now, UNRWA says Israel's ban will not change the refugee status of Palestinians, but the decision will severely harm their lives and future. So what are aid organizations like yours trying to do in the meantime? Well, obviously, we're, we're taking stock of what options there may be to support or replace Palestinian communities if UNRWA services um, facilitate. But but I have to say, um, it would be a mistake for people to take any signal of contingency planning from any humanitarian organization as either willingness or capacity to replace UNRWA services. 
um, irrespective of uh, questions of legal status and so on, there are 2 million people in dire need of humanitarian uh, services in Gaza today um, whose lives are at risk if the humanitarian response um, isn't able to scale up from its already, as I've said, insufficient level. Senior Vice President for Crisis Response Recovery and Development at the International Rescue Committee, Kieran Donnelly. Kieran, thank you.